What's going on, Salt Strong Nation? Today we will be talking about fine tuning your top water selection to specifically target redfish or to specifically target trout. Now, both of these lures are from the exact same company and they're from the same lure line, which is the Yozuri pencil. This is the 3D pencil and this is the 3D inshore pencil. Now, both of these lures are made pretty similarly, but there's some small differences that will actually contribute to a higher success rate with different species. And I'm going to go over all the pros and cons and the differences of each, and I'll actually show you some on the water footage of both both of these lures in action for each species. So before we dive too deep in, I do want to reiterate, we are not sponsored by Yozuri or any other tackle manufacturer. And in fact, I would recommend other topwater lures to do this exact same thing with. There's different lines for different companies and they do all have small modifications to each. Take Mirror Lure, for example, with their top dog and top pup and she dog lines. There are small differences to each lure that are going to contribute to a higher hookup ratio with each different species. And like I said, I'm going to go over all of that today. So let's go ahead and get started. Started. So the first thing I want to do is compare the builds of each of these two lures and I've purchased clear lures so you can actually see all the internal components as well. Both of these lures are four inches long. The 3DB pencil is nine sixteenths of an ounce and the 3D inshore is one half ounce. Now the one I want to look at in terms of build first is the 3DB pencil. Now, if we look, it's got a really nice torpedo style body, uh, really great design and for casting because it's really aerodynamic. From the head to the tail, it's pretty much the exact same consistency. It's not fat near the tail and skinny towards the head or vice versa. So that makes for really great casting. Now, in terms of the rattle and the internal components, what you've got is a single ball bearing at the tail end. Now, when you make casts with a single ball bearing, especially if it's a nice heavy one, what it's going to do is send that ball bearing towards the tail. And as you make that cast, that ball bearing is going to carry your lure all the way out to the area that you've casted to. And it's just going to make for a nice, clean and accurate cast. So now I want to take a look at the rattles and the aerodynamics of the 3D inshore, as you'll see, it's got kind of a curved back. It's not like the 3DB where it's just a straight, you know, torpedo style body. It's kind of hunched. It looks a lot like a pilchard where it's got that curved belly and that curved back and it tapers from a fatter body up front to a skinnier body in the back. And now if we look at the rattles, you'll notice that there's actually three in this lure. So these two ones that are over here are going to move from side to side from left to right on this lure. And then the third one is going to move from the front to the back. Now, when you make the cast with this lure, it's not going to be as accurate as a single ball bearing. And without diving into a full physical lesson. Essentially, these two ball bearings up front are actually going to not help the lure make really great accurate casts, uh, but the weight is going to be centered on this back ball bearing as you make the cast like it was with this one here. So this lure is not going to have as great of castability or accuracy as the 3DB pencil, but with the additional rattles, what you're going to notice is it's going to sound like a small school of bait fish or a clicking shrimp as it moves away. And I'm going to go ahead and compare the rattles now so you can hear. So I'm going to hold the hook so you can hear. This is essentially going to sound like a small bait fish or some shrimp clicking along the surface. So that was the 3D inshore. The smaller ball bearings are going to contribute to a higher pitch sound that's not going to travel as far, but it's going to be nice, high pitch, and loud. Um, and it, like I said, it's going to simulate those small shrimp or those small bait fish. And if you see a specific type of bait that's popping in an area, you should definitely try to match the pitch if you can. If not, it's not that big of a deal. But again, this video is about fine tuning your top waters as much as possible. So the rattles are a very important consideration to take. Now, if we look at the 3DB pen, Pencil, what we'll notice is that one large rattle in the back. If you've ever caught bait fish in a cast net or anything and you hear them really click, that's them flicking their tail very fast as they're trying to, you know, escape from the net. Underwater, it's even more pronounced. It's a really hard snap and it sounds a lot like what you're going to hear with this 3D pencil. So this is essentially a larger rattle that's going to travel a longer distance, but it's not going to have that school effect that the 3D inshore is going to give off. More rattles is going to simulate more bait, but the sound isn't going to travel as far because it's a higher pitch. This is a very low pitch rattle that sounds like a larger profile bait fish that's moving through the water. So these rattles are also going to contribute to the action of the lure when you walk them through the water. So with that one single ball bearing, this lure is going to be able to make really nice defined cuts through the water because it's a single piece of metal that's you know is bouncing from one side of the lure to the other so it's going to make very clean and long cuts 
Now, there is also a ribbed belly on the bottom of this lure that's been patented by Yozuri. It's called the, the wave pattern belly. Do I really think this makes a huge difference? Probably not that much, but I do notice that it does have a very clean action in the water and it does you know, create a small ripple effect, which most topwaters already do. This doesn't really set it apart from any other topwaters, but it is a nice addition that might possibly help. Uh, there's gonna be further testing on this, but if we look at the 3D inshore, what we see is with these extra rattles in the back, it's not gonna be able to have as defined of a cut. It's not gonna make as long of a cut, but what it's gonna do is just keep that lure in one small spot and make a really loud rattle. And it's just with the hunched back, gonna keep it from popping just pretty much head turns. The, the lure in the tail end is gonna sit actually down in the water because of the three rattles that are back here. With this 3D B, what it's gonna do is sit on top of the water in a straight line. So if you're looking at these two lures, you know, in the water, they're gonna essentially sit just like this. So to really determine which of these is going to perform better for redfish versus trout, we really just need to take a look at the main prey of each of these species and the way that they're going to be hunting that prey. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at redfish first. As we talked about earlier, these rattles are gonna simulate small shrimp that are clicking away or small bait fish that are fleeing. And we know that redfish, their primary way of hunting is to forage along the bottom, stir up mud and small foliage like submerged grass, and to get things that are hiding in them to run and flee away, and then the redfish will usually chase them down. So so like we mentioned earlier, those rattles are going to simulate the most you know, authentic prey that those redfish are going to be hunting. We know that most slot redfish are not going after really large bait fish like giant hogleg mullet or big croaker or anything like that. Their primary prey is going to be smaller crustaceans and smaller bait fish. And as we listen to, that rattle is going to most you know, authentically simulate that. Another thing we need to think about with this lure in the way that it really is great with the hookup ratio for reds is that their mouth is you know, positioned downward. As we mentioned, those redfish are usually foraging along the bottom and their jaw hinges downwards. Now, when they spook that prey, they will chase it down. And if you've ever had a top water blow up from a red and it misses, it's because it could not get its jaw high enough up onto the lure to where it could get those hooks. Now, as I mentioned earlier with this top water, it sits a little bit further down than most. As we talked about with this pencil, it'll sit, you know, pretty much in line with the water level, while this one right here will sit a little bit further down. That is fantastic for redfish and will really increase your hookup ratio. So in summary, this would be my ideal topwater lure for redfish. It would have you know, those high pitch rattles, if possible, multiple rattles in the lure, and it's gonna sit a little bit further down in the water. Again, the con of this type of lure is generally they're not gonna cast as well, and they're not gonna have really great aerodynamics, and they're not gonna you know make huge cuts in the water. That's not too big of a deal for redfish. Remember, they really can't chase down lures that are making really Really rapid movements. They're just trying to get those shrimp and those small bait fish that are moving through the water as those redfish are spooking them off. So if we now take a look at the diet and feeding habits of trout, this 3DB pencil is going to simulate the most authentic presentation for a trout and is probably going to get you more trout than this 3D inshore would. Now, if we take a look at the lure design, again, it's got that single ball bearing in the back. And as we talked about earlier, it's going to most closely simulate a larger bait fish. If you've ever caught you know bait in a cast net you'll hear them clicking and trying to flee out of that net and it's a really nice low pitch flick uh, it's a little bit different than the 3d inshore is so what we need to do is keep that in mind when we're picking our trout lures does it have a low pitch rattle and another thing that i talked about with this lure earlier is it makes really nice and wide cuts we know that those trout are mainly hunting by sight they're a little bit different than redfish they're not going off of the sounds uh, as much they're, they're really looking for that vibration on the top of the water and they're looking for larger cuts. So we know that with this 3D inshore, it's not gonna make as great of cuts as this 3DB pencil would. So the larger the cut we can get out of this lure, the better. Now, this lure doesn't sit down like this 3D inshore does. That's not as big of a deal with trout because their jaw hinges upwards. They're a type of predator that's going to attack a prey from below and it's not really gonna have much of an issue with getting a hold of it. Now, like I said with that rattle, their main prey is gonna be croaker. It's gonna be larger white bait. Possibly even some upsized mullet. So we want that bait to be simulated by this larger rattle instead of the smaller rattle that's gonna be a smaller bait fish. The, the better of a authentic presentation we can give for these trout, and it's gonna match the type of bait that they're after, which would be you know a larger bait fish as we can listen. 
as that's moving through the water, that's gonna attract some attention from trout on the sound side, but the main cuts and the really clean movement that this is gonna have is gonna catch the eye of those trout as well, as we know their eyes are positioned on the top of their head, so that's one of their primary ways of hunting. Now, thinking about both of these lures as opposed to each other, both of them, again, will catch both species. It's about finding the very small nuances in each of the design of these lures that's really gonna maximize results for one species versus another. Again, the lower down you know, angle of this lure for redfish is probably the biggest determining factor. You're gonna have more hookups with this lure, but again, it doesn't make as wide of a walk. So it's not gonna catch the eye of trout like this 3DB pencil would. And again, the rattle from this lure is going to most closely simulate some larger bait that trout would be more interested in as opposed to a redfish. So I wanna go ahead and show you guys both of these lures in action for both redfish and trout and give you a full example of how well they work in real life as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. Got one. Oh, he's getting real close to those oysters. Oh yeah. Very nice trout. Oh no, the net's getting tangled. Keep your head down, bud. Got you this time, bud. <laughs> Look at that chunk right there on that Yozuri. Oh, I'm turned around. This is not fun. But that's where the fish are, so got to keep going. Did he get it? Don't know. Yep, there he is. Still got to keep working it until you feel that fish. Let's go. Decent sized little redfish. So they're sitting right on that crab trap, right in the middle of this creek. No, yes, there we go, that's two. So guys, as you can see, both of these lures will perform very well for both redfish and trout. And I do like fine tuning my tackle selection if I know what I'm gonna target. If I'm really targeting deeper water with higher current, I'm generally gonna be looking for trout. So I'll be using this 3DB pencil. And if I'm looking to target redfish in shallower, calmer water, where I'm seeing you know small shrimp and small bait busting, I'm usually gonna be going with this 3D inshore. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And if you wanna learn more about picking the right spots for both redfish and trout, I highly recommend you join us in the Salt Strong Insider Club. The Salt Strong Insider community has courses and tips designed to help you become a more efficient and consistent saltwater angler. And we also have reports from local anglers in your area to help you keep up with the trends and a guarantee that it will help you catch more fish or it's free. Now, with all the money that you'll be saving on rods, reels, lures, and tackle with your Insider Club discount in the shop, the membership pretty much pays for itself. So guys, thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong in wet lines today